Have you ever felt like there's something not quite right with the religious world? Have you ever wondered how there could be over 30,000 denominations all teaching something slightly different? Many go about their day without even thinking about it because they choose to believe a lie instead of searching out the truth. God has given us a free will to choose how we live and what we believe. So I'm offering you a choice. You can choose your heart. If you do this, then nothing will change, and you will continue to believe what you want to believe. You can also choose the truth, which is the Bible. If you choose the Bible, you need to realize that your life will change because it will teach you the truth. What will your choice be? Before you take the Bible, just remember, I'm just offering you the truth. You may not like what you see, but it is the truth. I'm glad to see that you chose the truth. I want to start out slow. You know how many say attend a church of your choice or one church is as good as another? Well, that's a lie. But in order for you to understand this, you have to open your eyes to what the Bible says instead of what the world is trying to teach you. Can you do this? Great. Paul makes it clear that there is only one body, which is talking about the church in Ephesians 4, and verse number 4. When Peter made his great confession about who Jesus was, Jesus said, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Notice Jesus said, my church, in the singular. Early on, there were people who wanted to divide the one church by following after men. But Paul told them not to do this. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Jesus is the head of the church. He died and purchased the church with his blood, even though there are many members that make up the church, there is still just one church. 1 Corinthians twelve twelve, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. I know it can be shocking to hear this, but God's word clearly states that there is just one church, and Jesus is the head of that church. So what does that tell you about there being more than 30,000 denominations? It should tell you that these denominations are man-made and are not the true church. Do you know how you can tell which is the true church? It's by comparing what they teach to the Bible. If their teaching does not match up with the Bible, then you know something is wrong. If they call themselves after a man like Luther or after a religious act like baptism, then you need to ask the question, who died for me? Was it Christ or this name my denomination calls itself by? The next big test is to find out what is taught regarding salvation and how one becomes a member of the one church that belongs to Jesus. Many in the religious world will tell you that all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God and invite Him into your heart. 
while others may tell you to say the sinner's prayer. Again, you might be shocked to learn that these are not taught in God's word. The only thing that is partially right is that you must believe. But belief alone will never save you because even the demons believed in Jesus, but they were not saved. James 2 verse 19. Did you know that the only time faith only is used in scripture is found in James 2 and verse 24? You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. When James says works, he's not talking about works of merit or works of the law of Moses, but he's talking about works of obedience. Jesus is the author of salvation to those who obey him. Hebrews 5 verses 8 through 9. Are you ready to see what the Bible says about salvation and how one becomes a member of the Lord's church? Great. Ever since sin entered into the world through Adam and Eve, man needed a plan from God to be saved. God knew before he created everything that man would sin and would need a saving plan. Ephesians 1 verse 4, 1 Peter 1 verse 20. The law of Moses was never meant to last and it was nailed to the cross to make way for the new covenant instituted by Jesus. Colossians 2 verse 14, Ephesians 2 verses 14 through 16. The new covenant is our authority today and it teaches us everything we need to know about salvation and God's grace. Obviously, we must hear the words of the new covenant to know what it says, Romans 10, verse 17. Once we hear, we must choose to believe what we have heard. If we don't choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then we will be lost in our sins, John 8, 24. If we don't believe, there is no hope for us, and we are not going to do anything the Bible says. So belief is the beginning point that leads to our salvation. Once we believe in Jesus and that we are lost without him, then we must repent, Luke 13, verse 3. Repentance means we change our minds and behavior to that of God's word. This is not a one-time action, but a continual one. The Bible also teaches that we must confess Jesus as our Lord, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. We should never be ashamed of Jesus. We don't want to be like the Jewish leaders in John 12, verse 42. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. This is another example that belief alone will never save. Confessing Jesus as Lord is not a one-time action either. We should never be ashamed to confess him as our Lord, because without him, salvation would not be possible. Many in the religious world have made their own rules for salvation. Though some of them might agree with some of what I've said so far, most denominations will disagree with what I'm about to show you from the Bible. An important step in our salvation involves being immersed in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Most in the religious world will baptize people either by immersion or sprinkling them but they teach that baptism is not necessary for salvation, but that it's simply a sign that you have already been saved. Some require baptism to join their denomination, so they make it harder to enter their denomination than to be saved per their teaching. If you're willing to open your eyes to what the Bible teaches, you will never be able to accept what most of the religious world teaches about water baptism. Are you ready? Great. First, consider the Great Commission. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mark sixteen sixteen. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Jesus commands his disciples to baptize people by the authority of the Godhead. And he clearly states that one must believe and be baptized to be saved. This alone should tell you that there's something special about water baptism. When we go to Acts chapter 2, when the apostles began to proclaim the gospel message at the birth of the church, 
their message struck the heart of many. Acts 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Did you notice what Peter said baptism was for? It was for the forgiveness of our sins. Think about this. Can you be saved if you are still in your sins? No, you cannot. Since you have to be water baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, it becomes clear that baptism is necessary for salvation because until you are baptized, you are stuck with your sins. Paul had to go get himself baptized to wash away his sins, according to Acts 22, verse 16. Peter specifically tells us that baptism saves in 1 Peter 3, verse 21. What I've said so far should be proof enough that water baptism is necessary for salvation and is not some sign that you are already saved. But we're not finished yet because baptism also is the point that we are added to the one church that Jesus is the head of when we are baptized. The church is sometimes called the body of Christ, Colossians 1 verse 24. It's also called the kingdom at times. Jesus said that in order to enter the kingdom, we must be born of water and the Spirit, John 3, verse 5. The Holy Spirit teaches what we must do through the Word. And as we have read, we must be water baptized for the forgiveness of our sins to be able to enter into the kingdom, the church, or the body of Christ. Paul said that we are baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. In Acts chapter 2, we learn that around 3,000 people were baptized after what Peter said in Acts 2 and verse 38. And we find out that those who were baptized were added to them. And verse 47 says the Lord was adding the saved people to the church. They didn't have to have people vote if they could join. No, God added them when they were baptized into Christ. One last thought. The Bible tells us that salvation and the forgiveness of sins are found in Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 7, 2 Timothy 2 verse 10. If we want to have salvation and the forgiveness of our sins, we must be in Christ, right? Well, how do we get into Christ? Well, Paul answers this question. Galatians 3 verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Romans 6, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So not only is baptism the point our sins are forgiven and when we are added to the church by God, it's also when we are put into Christ and our old sinful man is done away with. If you continue reading Romans chapter 6, you'll see that baptism is the point that we die in the Lord and are united with him and are raised up alive as a new creature in Christ. Now that you know that the Bible only speaks of there being one church, and you know how to become part of that one church, what are you going to do? You cannot unlearn the truth. You can only reject it. Hope you'll choose to follow the word of God and not the word of man. There is so much more to learn from the Bible that doesn't agree with many in the religious world. So I hope that you will not only obey God's plan of salvation, but that you will continue to grow and continue to compare what you are being taught with the Word of God. I hope you will start worshiping and studying with the Church of Christ near you, but never stop being a good Berean. Acts 17, verse 11.